Hi, I'm Raven Gramasi, author of books on Wicca, witchcraft, magic, and neo-pagan inner mystery traditions. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about my current book, The Book of the Holy Strega. This deals with the Aradia legend and is similar in some ways to that of the Aradia story told by Charles Gottfried Leland. My book goes into a little bit more of the behind the scenes stuff, some of the older material, and deals with uh, the more pagan elements. Uh, Charles Leland's book dealt with a lot of Christianized elements, which are very clear when you look at the story of Lucifer and um, this type of thing, the lost paradise themes and stuff, clearly uh, Christianized themes. So what I do is I look at the time period, both in Leland's gospel and in some of the other traditions, that places the Aradia story generally around the 1300s to 1400s. This is the time of the noble class and the uh, oppressed uh, peasant class. So we look at that in the book to, to see, does that really match? Historically, were the things that actually took place, are they anything like what is described in the Aradia stories? And by a close examination, you'll find a compelling argument that yes, the historical period and the references in the Aradia material uh, do match and they do make sense in a cultural way for what was going on in Italy at the time. You'll also find in the book that I deal with the Gospel of Aradia, similar to uh, the way that Charles Leland did, except I take his material and I change the, the legends and stories around from a variety of his writings to present a chronological order of these stories that actually make sense. And I take out the Christian elements and I reintroduce the earlier pagan elements so that the story flows very nicely. And you can kind of really see what he was hinting at and some of the things he didn't say are, are very clear in the book. Then I go into the actual teachings of Aradia, which um, have to do with the spiritual tradition. Now, the book really is also my attempt to explain my hand in it all. What I added to the tradition, what I added to the Aradia story in terms of elaboration. I don't see myself as an inventor of any of it or a creator of any of it, but I do see myself as a elaborator and a, and a bard almost in the way that I want to present it to give it flavor to give it fullness and that's very much a, a heartfelt within the book and I, I think you'll find that a particular interest. Then I go into the uh, part of the book that deals with witches without a gospel. And what this means is there were indeed and still are witches in Italy of Italian traditions that really were not connected to the Aradia story. Um, so you have you know basically some village mountain which um, who's a solitary, and she really didn't come into connection with uh, these uh, more elaborate tales and this type of thing. So her craft was more about magic and, and more basic and primal, and so you'll see some of that in the, uh, the back of the, the book. There's also, I introduce uh, people that were influential in presenting witchcraft, uh, the Italian variety, to the public. So, of course, I talk about Charles Leland and flush him out, uh, make him... Um, more real to people. And then I look at Madalena, who was his witch informant, and uh, show that she actually was a real person and that she actually was involved in, um, in witchcraft practices. And this is very clear when you look at some of the writings that Leland uh, had that don't appear in publication. Now, I was able to, to look at these items in the Library of Congress and was actually able to go through his handwritten letters, journals, his diary and, and some memoirs that he wrote. And in there, he really talks a lot about Madeleine on a day-to-day -day basis, the type of magic she practiced, what he witnessed with his own eyes. So I touch on that in the book, and I think that that brings some richness to the, uh, to the idea of uh, Charles Leland and Madalena. I also talk about Leo Martello a little bit. He was very influential in modern times of uh, making the Italian path a uh, public. Uh, he wrote very little about it, but he was very active behind the scenes in the community. Um, there are appendix in the book that are of interest as well. You'll find a lot of illustrations, um, which I think do enrich the book. So I hope that you will consider getting a copy of the uh, Book of the Holy Strega and um, seeing if it doesn't speak to you of the old ways and give you some information that may help you on your own path. Thank you for your time and your interest. Much appreciated.